Hello and welcome to your Mining Disrupt News Update for Monday, September 4th, 2023. As always, everything I say here should be taken for entertainment and education purposes only. Please do your own research when investing in anything. Also, if you're interested in partnering with us as a sponsor, please reach out. Today I'll be touching on two stories. First, and only briefly, I'll be talking about Cambridge updating their Bitcoin power consumption index. And then secondly, I'll be talking about the news that's on seemingly everyone's mind when it comes to Bitcoin in the past week or so. The ETFs. When are they coming? But first, the numbers. We're over on, as always, timechaincalendar.com, and we see in the top right-hand corner that the exchange rate is 25,981 USD for a single Bitcoin. Or you can trade a single dollar and get 3,847 sats. The on-chain transaction fees are a little bit wonky. We see priority and anytime both at 9 sats per V-byte, but anything less than 7 is going to get purged. So if it was me, I'd probably just bump it up to 10 or 12 to make sure I get accepted in the next block and get things moving along nice and quick. And the hash rate for the last 14 days has been still just under 400 at 389.5. And now, before I get into the news, make sure you scan this QR code right down here so that you can get your tickets to Mining Disrupt 2024 happening in Miami, Florida, June 24th through the 27th. And like, subscribe, you know the deal. You're here on YouTube. You've heard it a thousand times before. But make sure you do it here. It helps us and it helps you keep on getting this good information. All right, news. Bitcoin's power consumption has been compared to things like tumble dryers, toasters, and whole nation states. This from Decrypt. Cambridge updates Bitcoin mining index to reveal true power consumption. The previous power estimates were greatly overestimated. The first and most noticeable discrepancy appears in 2021, where our previous CBECI model estimated an electricity consumption of 104 terawatt hours, 15 terawatt higher than the revised model estimate, 89.0, the report said. This just goes to show that Bitcoin is ever-evolving, ever-changing, and so what might have been true, maybe, if the numbers were accurate a year, two, three, whatever ago, is not necessarily true now. You can't continually assume that the computers, the machines, the devices that were used in previous years are still being used. So the power consumption is going to change. Next up, we're talking about the ETFs. And this is a clip from CNBC. If you were in the chair today, would you have approved it? Well, look, I, I, I'm not there and I'm not going to um, have that kind of, you know, I do this, he would do that. What I, what I have said is, as this has developed, it is clear that Bitcoin is not a security. It is clear that Bitcoin is something that retail investors want access to, that institutional investors want access to. And importantly, some of our most trusted providers who are fiduciaries or have duties of best interest want to provide this product to the retail public. So I think, as Anthony said, an approval isn't inevitable. Um, the dichotomy between a futures product and a cash product can't go on forever. And so I think that's the path we're on. Imagine for a minute that you worked at a nut processing plant and you sold Brazil nuts, cashews, pecans, walnuts, etc. But you didn't really have the peanut game on lockdown. For the sake of this analogy, peanuts are Bitcoin. And you wanted to get into the peanut game. The first step that you might take is to spread the awareness of peanuts. You might get the word out there that you were interested, as a big nut producer, in selling peanuts. You had some new packaging that you wanted to put them in, and it was going to be a big deal. You were going to bring exposure to peanuts. You were going to bring it to the wide world. But the best way to make a lot of money is to get as many people interested in peanuts as possible. So if you are a giant nut producer, and you go to the food governing board and say, hey, we want to sell peanuts and they say, sure, no problem. You get the stamp of approval and you go, whoa, 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 wait, 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 no, no, hold on. Only 1% of the population is even really aware of peanuts. So don't approve us yet. Wait. And the food governing board goes, wait, I'm sorry. You want us to hold off? I thought you wanted to sell peanuts. We do want to sell peanuts. We absolutely want to sell peanuts, but we need more people interested in peanuts peanuts to sell them and make a lot of money. Then the next thing that you do is you go to different news outlets. I and mean, keep in mind that BlackRock basically controls most of the major media outlets at this point. So you'd go to those different media outlets, you'd tell them that you were going to get into peanuts, then you get all sorts of people going, oh, did you know that the biggest nut producer in the game is going to get into peanuts? Maybe we should look into peanuts. Maybe we should buy peanuts. Well, let's start getting peanuts. So you generate all this interest. And once you've got all this interest in peanuts, 
all sorts of people willing to buy into peanuts, slowly accumulating where they can. Then you would go to the governing board and say, now approve us for peanuts. Now let us start selling peanuts. So they give you that stamp, bada bing, bada boom, and peanuts are everywhere. And now everybody's interested in peanuts. And on that note, we've got this news update from Watcher.Guru. JP Morgan says SEC will likely approve grayscale spot Bitcoin ETF. JP Morgan, JP Morgan Chase, stated that the SEC will likely have to approve multiple Bitcoin spot ETFs, leaving them with no major choice. After years of rejection, the SEC is running out of reasons to deny spot Bitcoin ETFs while futures products operate without issues. With Grayscale breaking through, the floodgates may soon open for investors to gain direct exposure to Bitcoin through their brokerage accounts. While the SEC has yet to shift from its hesitant stance, the Grayscale decision undeniably turns up the heat. Now, there's one clause here in this article that I'm not a fan of. He says, with Grayscale breaking through, the floodgates may soon open for investors to gain direct exposure to Bitcoin through their brokerage accounts. You don't need a brokerage account to gain direct exposure to Bitcoin. You can get direct exposure to Bitcoin right now. There are all sorts of ways to do that. All you have to do is buy some Bitcoin, and there are hundreds of ways to do that. Non-KYC, KYC, from a miner, from a friend. There's many, many ways to get Bitcoin. And the way that you know for a fact, unquestionably, that you have that Bitcoin is you take it into self-custody. That is what you do. That's what you do. And on that note, I'm going to give you the three rules of Bitcoin. And this is via British HODL, at British HODL. Step number one, you buy Bitcoin. Step number two, you shut the fuck up. And step number three, you get fabulously wealthy. I suggest you watch the whole video. Link's down in the description. But the TLDR is this. BlackRock understands Bitcoin. They unquestionably know what it is, and they want a piece of that absolute scarcity. And with that, I hope you have a great rest of your week as we just started a new one. Until next time.